Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Ian Bins here on Twitter posting this, an exclusive Iraq to end all dollar cash withdrawals by January 1st, 2024. Guys, it's coming. A cashless society coming down the pike in, uh, you know, Iraq, just another one of these countries that is looking to do this. I believe Australia was also uh, on the docket for a cashless uh, society with uh, banks saying, you know, they're also going to stop offering cash uh, offering cash at the tellers, I believe it was, and uh, you could only get cash from machines. Well, now Iraq will ban cash withdrawals and transactions in U.S. dollars as of January 1st, 2024, in the latest push to curb the misuse of its hard currency reserves in financial crimes and the evasion of U.S. sanctions on Iraq. So this does not have to do with Iraqi dinar. It has to do with U.S. dollars specifically. But that is also going to cause problems considering the U.S. dollar is still the main currency used for imports and exports. They're doing it for different reasons, but, you know, I think the outcome is all, uh, you know, moving to that same direction. The move aims to stamp out the illicit use of some 50% of the $10 billion that Iraq imports in cash from the New York Federal Reserve each year. This is coming from Mazen Ahmed, uh, Director General of Investment and Remittances at the Iraq Central Bank. It's also part of a broader push to de-dollarize an economy that has seen the greenback preferred over local notes by a population wary of recurring wars and crises following the 2003 U.S. invasion. People who deposit dollars into banks before the end of 2023 will continue to be able to withdraw funds in dollars in 2024, but dollars deposited in 2024 could only be withdrawn in local currency at the official rate of 1320. So that's an interesting uh, protocol, I guess, to put in place for the country of Iraq. And I really do wonder if, uh, you know, other countries are going to follow suit. Maybe this is part of the controlled demolition. I mean, you know, debasing the U.S. dollar uh, I mean, considering the U.S. dollar is the central currency for trade and debasing the U.S. dollar, having other countries like, you know, all these BRICS nations moving towards, uh, you know, whether it's a BRICS currency or whether it's their own currencies using DLT platforms like RippleNet to transfer those trades, leveraging XRP for the liquidity is all part and parcel to where this new economy is going. And, you know, looking at what Iraq's doing now, uh, you know, saying we don't want uh, people using the U.S. dollar. So they found a sneaky way to uh, encourage people to avoid trading in the U.S. dollar here. Anyway, wanted to thank Ian Bins for that. So then is it any coincidence that, you know, we're seeing more and more banks and financial institutions acquire monetary licenses? Crypto Eddie here has now uh, counted 15 companies now hold the coveted MPI license for digital tokens in Singapore. Ripple was one of the most notable ones that, uh, you know, we've reported on, obviously. But guys, there are several others. Circle, Coinbase, FOMO Pay, which is uh, connected to Ripple. The Coin Hako Exchange, which is an SBI and Signum funded bank. There's connections to Ripple there. Uh, also Signum Bank, Paxis Global, Revolut, uh, Ripple, of course, Blockchain.com, Sparrow Tech, Digital Treasures, Independent Reserves, DBS, Vickers Securities, Forest DAX, and Metacomp. So these are all uh, banks now that hold that MPI license for digital tokens in Singapore specifically. And I got to say, Singapore knocking it out of the park when it comes to, uh, you know, cryptocurrency adoption, innovation. Uh, it's, it's clear there, regulatory clarity, front and center in Singapore. And I think more countries should be paying attention, you know, especially the laggards, the USAs of the world, you know, should be paying attention to what, uh, you know, countries like Singapore are doing with regards to crypto adoption. Anyway, wanted to thank Crypto Eddie for posting that. Mr. Man here also bringing this up. Now, MPCI, very Ripple connected. They are to facilitate cross-border payments to the UAE. Surprise, surprise. This is the Indian payment system. And, uh, you know, we know Ripple already has uh, huge ties in India. Uh, but now we're seeing NPCI, International Payments Limited, the international arm of the National Payments Corporation of India. They're going to ink an agreement deal with Al Etihad Payments on Thursday, or they did ink a deal with Al Etihad Payments on Thursday in Abu Dhabi to facilitate cross-border transactions. This is what an official said. The MOU will be signed on the development of the domestic card scheme of the UAE based on India's Rupay debit and credit card stack, the official said. So guys, this uh, just happened recently. NPCI to facilitate these cross-border payments in the UAE. And we know, uh, you know, the UAE, United Arab Emirates, they are already very Ripple enabled. So, you know, it would make sense for two Ripple enabled countries or Ripple regulated, I guess we could say countries decide, okay, the platforms are consistent. They're congruent. We can leverage XRP for liquidity in these corridors. Uh, you know, there's not going to be a problem regulatorily. So let's do it. And this is a big deal. This is not just one small Indian bank, guys. This is NPCI, which is huge.
Just quickly to give you guys a sense of who they are, the National Payments Corporation of India is an umbrella organization for operating retail payments and settlement systems in India. So in the entire country, they're kind of like the, uh, you know, a SWIFT for, for India, I guess. It's an initiative of the Reserve Bank of India and India Banks Association under the provisions of the Payment and Settlement Systems Act of 2007 for creating a robust payment and settlement infrastructure in India. It was created by the Reserve Bank of India for operating retail payments and settlement systems systems in India. So uh, the, the, the payment system for payment systems, basically, for uh, a country with the second largest population in the world, I think they're on track for uh, being the, the largest population in the world at some point. Anyway, they're going to facilitate cross-border payments in the UAE, Sharia compliant, the Middle East big on Ripple adoption. So uh, to me, it's no surprise proximity uh, geographically very close to. So I could see where these countries would form these partnerships. Anyway, I wanted to thank Mr. Man here on Twitter for posting that. I'm going to keep moving along. Matt posted this, guys. Ripple was ranked in the top 335 fintech unicorns worldwide, according to EIT Digital. Here are the fintech unicorns, guys, ranked. And uh, you guys can see down here Ripple at number 30, along with uh, some cryptocurrency exchanges, including KuCoin. And uh, I noticed Binance was up here as well, number 10 spot. Uh, and some Ripple partners like Nubank, we know Revolut has uh, a Ripple connection. Also over here, number 63, Airwallex does also have a Ripple connection. So interesting to see that they've made it on the list. This is the Fintech Innovation, a balancing act between disruption and regulation. That is, uh, you know, who these guys are, what they're looking at. Launched in 2010, EIT Digital set out on a journey of growth. Growth in our community, growth of delivery on innovation, entrepreneurship and talent, and growth of its impact through thought leadership. Uh, since its launch, EIT Digital has equipped more than 3,500 students with the skills to innovate and become entrepreneurs. So they are uh, an organization that wants to foster this digital adoption. Uh, 780 startups and scale-ups to grow internationally, okay, created more than 250 ventures and launched more than 540 products and services commercially. Uh, EIT Digital matured against the background of a fast accelerating digital world and a growing focus on entrepreneurship in Europe, complementing the strong European research base. This entrepreneurial mindset will strengthen Europe's position in a digital world driven by data platforms and the network economy uh, created by Strong Digital Europe. This safe uh, will safeguard Europe values by being inclusive, fair, and sustainable. So you guys can see what their mandate is and uh, Ripple on the list. Number 30, out of the top 335 most important fintech unicorns worldwide. I think that is an incredible feat. Not only that, guys, Ripple just keeps raking in the awards. Honored to see Ripple recognized at CBI Insights' annual list of top 100 most promising private global fintech companies. This posted by Monica Long here. Uh, so Ripple did post this uh, originally. We're pleased to share that Ripple is on this year's fintech 100 list for our work in modernizing cross-border payments. So they are uh, top 100. Hard to put it into words how proud I am of everybody at Ripple and what they've achieved in 2023. A testament to our strength and maturity of our business and powerhouse team. And of course, Ripple couldn't have done it without uh, the rest of the world because clearly it doesn't look like the U.S. is on their side or has not been. I mean, I shouldn't say that about the entire U.S. financial industry, but at least in terms of regulators, the SEC... They have to be taken out. They have to be put down uh, or at least restructured in some way, shape or form. Uh, nevertheless, Ripple is still hitting it out of the park. Top 100 fintechs on the CBI Insights annual list. So I wanted to thank Monica Long and Ripple for posting that. Anders here also mentioning this. Okay, I've wanted for Ripple and Circle to partner. That would be an interesting partnership, uh, I think. Uh, they've never been at odds with one another, uh, although I never have really felt like they've needed one another for partnership. Nevertheless, Here's what's happening, guys. It seems a bit more likely now that Miriam from Circle will be a speaker at Swell in November. You never know. I mean, there may be an opportunity there. I guess we just don't know. We don't know what's brewing behind the scenes. I mean, in terms of, uh, you know, what they do today, maybe not so much. But, you know, if there is an opportunity for more innovation down the road, I could see Ripple and Circle partner. Remember last Swell, MasterCard was a speaker. Then we found out they were working with Ripple on CBDCs. Well, that's an interesting observation here from Anders. Miriam Kawan is uh, one of the speakers at this year's Swell. And if you guys uh, wanted to know who is speaking at Swell, I will link this in the description of the video. Here you can meet the speakers at this year's Swell event. Our commitment to delivering an unforgettable experience at Swell is stronger than ever. And it all begins with our world-class lineup of industry experts who will be gracing the stage. Of course, we've got Brad Garlinghouse, Monica Long. Uh, we've got Arif Amiri, Dubai International Financial Center Authority. Uh, and it is happening in Dubai this year. So that uh, makes a lot of sense. Of course, from uh, recent acquisition, uh, Adrian Tracani from Medico, the CEO of Medico. 
Uh, who else do we have here? MFS Africa, another Ripple partner. Uh, Dar Uk, uh, Ukduju. Who else do we have? Circle President Miriam Kiwan, who we just highlighted. Interesting connection there. Yesterday, I talked a little bit about Nuve. So Jan Lorenk is also uh, going to be speaking at this year's Swell event. We've got a member from Bitstamp, James Greenwood, uh, Sandy Young, of course, Stuart Alderati, probably for the legal stuff, James Wallace for CBDCs, and uh, Caleb Udui, uh, the Republic of Palau. So, uh, so far, the lineup looking very, very sweet. Uh, and so again, guys, I will link this in the description if you want to know more information on Ripple's Swell event. But I mean, we could, in fact, see something happen, something uh, transpire after this event. Who knows? Because a lot of these, from what I am realizing here, a lot of these uh, companies represented here are already partnered with Ripple. So who knows what it could mean? Wanted to thank Anders for posting that. Guys, here's one from the Wrath of Kahneman. Now we know Ripple and Thunes are partners. Access Africa and Thunes are to join forces to improve cross-border payments in and out of 13 African countries. So looking as though they're expanding their footprint in an effort to streamline and simplify cross-border transfers and payments across Africa and beyond. Access Africa has formed a partnership with Thunes, a leading global payment infrastructure platform that connects over 130 countries into a single network, offering its members seamless interoperable and frictionless cross-border payments. The partnership will allow Access Africa to facilitate inbound and out uh, outbound cross-border payments in 13 markets. So guys, they're opening up to 13 more markets. Botswana, Cameroon, uh, Democratic Republic of the Congo, Gambia, Ghana, Guinea, Kenya, Mozambique, Nigeria, Rwanda, Sierra Leone, or Sierra, Le Sierra Leone, excuse me, South Africa, and Zambia, according to Robert Giles, uh, or Gills, Senior Advisory Retail. Here's what he said, guys, a quote, this strategic partnership reinforces Access Africa's commitment to providing customers and non-customers with access to top quality remittance services. Thunes is a cross-border payments network founded in 2016 that enables corporates and financial institutions to move funds seamlessly and help provide financial services in emerging markets. Of course, as we know, Thunes uh, has that Ripple connection. I don't know how long they've been partnered with Ripple, but probably for uh, you know the lion's share of their existence, our partnership will significantly expand the reach of Access Africa's payments and remittance services to over 100 more countries and expose Thunes to all 60 million customers of Access Africa with over 600 branch location. So they're really looking to uh, take a large swath of the African market there. Uh, the partnership between Access Africa's payments and remittance service and Thunes will bring the benefits of modern digital payment technology to the parties involved, addressing the friction within traditional bank-based cross-border payment flows and making payments faster, easier, and more transparent. The collaboration will bring significant improvements to the African fintech ecosystem and payment infrastructure, concluded Robert. So, uh, you know, that is big. Access Africa and Thunes partnering up to really uh, expand 60 million uh, customers from uh, the the uh, the Access Africa side of things, but also Thunes, right? They also have their customers. They are Ripple enabled, and uh, now they're looking to really kind of expand. Oh, I just noticed this too. Uh, Wrath of Kahneman posted that Access Africa is connected to MSF Africa, which is also a Ripple uh, ODL partner, but uh, I guess we're not saying ODL anymore. Ripple Payments Partner, I guess we're going to call it. So Torchbearer here saying, you know, exciting news, but I have to admit I'm tired of listening about all these connections at this point. Wrath of Kahneman saying that's entirely fair, but you know what? Volumes will eventually go up. We are going to see more RippleNet adoption. That in turn is going to translate into more XRP adoption once the world is ready. So still the teething pains, crawl, walk, run. We're getting there, guys. I think we're starting to walk fairly quickly at this point. Anyway, wanted to thank the Wrath of Kahneman for posting that. The ISO goat here on Twitter posting this, guys. Are we at an inflection point? It sounds as though we are from Intellect EU CEO. Listen to this tech trends you're seeing at the moment? Well, for me, it's really delightful to see that we are um, really at the inflection point where very uh, serious organizations um, here on the floor, many of them have booth here, have been already not only utilizing um, DLT emerging technology in their operations, but they've been in production for a year. They have processed, you know, trillion dollar months, like in case of Broadridge on their repo platform, or, you know, in case of Akiland, for instance, they already saving 100 million that uh, for the industry, right, with their one source platform, um, you know, with D7 on, um, on um, a Clearstream and Deutsche Börse Group, we see the accelerated issuance and they've also been in production for a year. We've hosted Fireside Chat yesterday here, they've been standing room only. So people do see the interest of learning from this top leaders that are paving the way. And what's really interesting also is that we see that while we have like long past uh, that stage of um, like, oh, are we doing another POC? You know, no, we're in production for, you know, over a year. Like the other aspect is 
like it's much more about interoperability. Now, how do we utilize new business models and create more mutualized workflows between all those distinct applications and ecosystems? And that's where I see also, for instance, good use for solutions like Demo Finance uh, that we utilize in some of our day-to-day -day work as well, um, specifically like libraries that allow to accelerate the time to market, time to production, because now it's like we do not want to waste any time. We, you know, we moved we on and we want to get to market, right? And we want to bring more products to market because all of our customers can benefit faster from, um, you know, our digital transformation. So customers benefiting, obviously, this is what these big companies want. And if you noticed, uh, Zupko, Hannah Zupko, by the way, CEO of Intellect EU, she was saying we are at an inflection point for this uh, technology. And she's saying, you know, all these DLT projects are coming to fruition now. They've been, uh, you know, in preparation, uh, working on pilots up until now. But guys, now is the time. Now everything is shifting. We know uh, November 2023, there's that huge ISO 20022 migration. So that is also playing a huge role in this. Uh, and just to give you guys a little bit of a background, moving from conventional payments to disruption, for the past decade, Intellect EU has partnered with large financial networks, regulators, and financial institutions that are central to the payments market. Most recently, with the disruption of distributed ledgers, Intellect EU has put themselves in the forefront of the financial industry, assisting financial institutions to combine traditional payments with new technology. Why? Traditional payments are not going away, at least not yet. So a common recognized startup, Ripple, provides an alternative solution that enables value to be exchanged utilizing distributed ledger technology. Ripple is a real-time gross settlement network that allows financial institutions to transact globally. 10 of the top 50 global banks. Now, again, guys, this was from 2016. So uh, an older article, but even at this time, Intellect EU had Ripple on their radar. And, uh, you know, this uh, even at this time, Ripple had 50 global central banks connected to Ripple's network. As a proof of concept, Stage continues to be successful. Financial institutions will want to combine conventional payment networks with the new technology. So this is precisely where Intellect EU comes in as a Ripple integration partner. Intellect EU has the means and most importantly, the experience to connect traditional payment networks with Ripple's technology. So here we have, fast forward, 2023, Hannah Zuko, CEO of Intellect EU at the Cybos conference in Toronto this year, talking about that inflection point, DLT technology going to pave the way for the future. And guys, she's saying it's happening very, very soon. The inflection point is now. So wanted to thank the ISO GOAT for posting that. Akbar Shakur also mentioning this, guys. My boy works for a bank, so he has a friend that works at a bank and he says he's at a conference right now. This was just posted uh, yesterday afternoon. He was at a conference. So this conference looks like it happened yesterday. I won't mention details, but look at the pic he sent me. Yeah, guys, happening right now. We know MasterCard recently released news about their Ripple partnership. We also know Visa is Ripple enabled through that Earthport connection. Existing relationships with the central banks, Master and Visa card. And guys, here it even says MasterCard partners Ripple and Consensus. So it is happening. They are talking about MasterCard today. In the context of literally yesterday, MasterCard is saying they are a partner with Ripple. And I mean, I guess we can infer that that means the new technology, RippleNet technology, for example, is going to be used very soon. So, uh, you know, I cannot confirm that this uh, photo is real. However, I'm taking uh, Akbar's word for it. We already know about the partnership, so it's no surprise that they're partnered with Ripple. The fact that they're mentioning it, though, as recent as yesterday at a conference makes me think things are brewing and going to come very, very soon. Also in Australia, Flip the Chain posting this. Okay, Ripple came to us to explain their offerings. And well, I mean, I'll let Paul Zalay, director of FTA Australia, had to say about RippleNet technology. Notice. Right. And again, I'm not an expert on it, but I understand they approached us some time ago, but at the time they were battling some legal battle in the yes. US. Yes. And our position to them was, look, come back to us once that's sorted out because yes. you only get one chance at a first impression. And if this court case doesn't go well for you, it wasn't right. good. So anyway, they got a good result in the US court case and um, they approached us again. And look, we're, we're going to have a bit more of a look at it. I'm not going to claim to be an expert on it, but we may look to promote their product. And, it, and again, it'll be buyer beware. Um, we'll say to our members, look, here's this new technology. From what I can understand, it can generate real-time uh, transfer yep. of payments. Yes and they seem to have a lot of um, checks and balances in place. At the briefing that I was at where I did that post, um, there was a lot of representatives from the major banks that were very interested in yes, it. So it's right. a, it is a real thing, that's right. um, but how that translates to 
um, meaningful solutions for our members will we'll only understand that in a bit more time. I think I've got a little bit more understanding of Ripple mm. because I have been following the Ripple case since got into the dramas with the financial bodies in the US. That period of time for Ripple, it was when the whole world was still trying to grappling with the idea of well, yeah. what blockchain was and all that sort of stuff. And because you're really going outside of the banking system, right? Mm. And, and anything that goes out of the banking system, the governments don't like it because yeah. Yeah, they can't see it. Mm. Uh, but Ripple's difference compared to all the other blockchains is that other blockchains is a decentralized model, which means that no one party controls it, whereas Ripple is a centralized model. Mm. So they want regulation. They want to basically mm. plug into the government system and use blockchain as a technology by way of payments getting transferred in an instant manner. When I saw you sort of talking to Ripple, I was like, oh, because I haven't followed the case, their case lately. I didn't know mm. whether they had a positive outcome or negative outcome. But mm. the fact that you were talking to them, they must have had a positive yeah. outcome. And then if their payment system are launching here in Australia or are offering as mm. a, you know, a legitimate commercial business mm. uh, offer, it's very interesting. It'd be very mm. interesting for the likes of me as well, mm. right? Because it will make cross-border payments and so forth a lot more efficient. Mm. Uh, it'd be very interesting to see what the fees they will charge. Yeah. I'm sure you, you'll probably get some of those details. Yeah. Um, but do share it with us when you um, get that information. What's the next step with them? Oh, look, really, the group uh, came and presented down here uh, at the waterfront here at Sydney Harbour, uh, but they, they were all Singapore-based, um, and um, so they were doing a bit of a roadshow here to, to you know, start getting their branding out. All right, so a few things here I want to address. Uh, firstly, uh, who is the second guy here saying, oh, I know a little bit more about Ripple than you do, and I know that they are centralized. Well, I know that has caused some uh, a, a rift down here. LeChang claims to have more understanding about Ripple than incorrectly says Ripple is centralized. Flip the chain, though, saying, you know, LeChang seems to be following what Gary Gensler says in this video. He finally answers why Ethereum is not centralized, whereas others are. And uh, we, we can argue that... Ripple is a centralized entity that wants to help banks. Uh, you know, they're a business, but the XRPL and XRP are not centralized. So those are two very, very different things. Uh, I don't know what he meant by that, but I mean, that argument does hold up. Who is this guy though? Paul Zalay. To give you guys some context here, Director Freight and Trade Alliance or the FTA Secretariat, Australian Peak Shippers Association, guys. This is Australia's free trade agreement. The FTA free trade agreement is an international treaty between two or more economies that reduces or eliminates certain barriers to trade in goods and services. So Ripple was approaching the FTA in Australia to say, hey, we can trade using XRP in Australia for all the trades that Australia makes, okay? All the imports, all the exports. And just to give you guys a sense of where that stands, guys, $1.553 trillion USD is Australia's GDP. So think of that. I mean, that's just one country, one small country at that. Talking to Paul Zelay, currently now entertaining the idea of leveraging RippleNet. Because the court case is no longer looming overhead, XRP now considered not a security. So guys, I mean, this is pretty big news alongside, you know, even from the retail end user application of RippleNet, MasterCard recently at this conference, just from yesterday, discussing how they are partners with Ripple. We are at an inflection point, guys, and I have a feeling the price of XRP is going to reflect that once we see that real world utility kick in. But I mean, we're not gonna see 100% of that real world utility over the next two years. The next two years, guys, we're going to have a kick at the can at this spec run. So I'm diversifying my trades and I'm opening up my portfolio for all my patrons. If that's something you're interested in, you can follow me, patreon.com slash working money channel. If you're looking to see how I'm going to be making money during this bull run, that's just my opinion though. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.